Russia's foreign ministry has summoned the U.S. ambassador, saying Washington has direct responsibility for an attack on Russian annex Crimea. Four people were killed by falling debris in Sevastopol on Sunday. Russia says it shot down five Ukrainian missiles over the port city. Moscow says U.S. specialists helped oversee the flight path of those missiles. A Pentagon spokesperson said Ukraine conducts its own military operations. Here's Daniel Hawkins with more on the Russian reaction from Moscow. We've also had a reaction from Sergei Lavrov, Russian foreign minister, who said there is no doubt in the involvement of the United States in what he describes as a terrorist attack in Crimea. Uh, Prime Minister Mishustin, in a meeting uh, with Russian officials, also drew parallels uh, just earlier today between what happened in Dagestan and Crimea, again describing both as terrorist acts. And Secretary of the uh, head of the State Duma Defense Committee, Andrei Kartopolov, has also echoed calls we heard earlier from Russian officials that, um, the, uh, that the West will be held responsible for supplying weapons. These are all claims we have heard before, of course, from Russia. Russia saying that uh, any Russian, any attacks by Ukraine on Russia using Western supplied weaponry uh, will mean uh, effectively direct involvement uh, in the Ukrainian conflict by Ukraine's allies. Uh, Dmitry Peskov, Maria Zakharova, uh, the uh, Russian uh, Kremlin spokesman and foreign ministry spokeswoman also being in no two minds earlier, describing this as a barbaric attack and saying that there will be uh, repercussions here. Uh, the foreign, the UN, uh, US, I should say, ambassador, Lynn Tracy, also summoned to the Russian foreign ministry for a protest uh, about the events yesterday. This does really represent a very direct condemnation, a very direct accusation by the Kremlin um, of uh, involvement uh, in Ukraine and is uh, effectively quite a serious diplomatic escalation. And here now is our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett, with the U.S. response. The Pentagon has responded. What the uh, Brigadier General Pat Ryder has said is that, uh, well, there is, it's no secret that the United States, of course, is supplying weapons to Ukraine. It is really up to Ukraine how those weapons are used. Ukraine makes its own targeting decisions. Ukraine conducts its own military operations. Now, having said that, we should point out that about three weeks ago, almost a month ago, the president, the commander in chief of the U.S. military, Joe Biden, did relax the restrictions surrounding how those weapons are used. For example, previously uh, there were tight restrictions and now, for example, the weaponry can be used to take out a Russian plane in Russian airspace if it's about to fire in Ukrainian airspace. So uh, this is significant. The other big significant change that has taken place in just the last week is the fact that now they are prioritizing deliveries to Ukraine over other nations. We have just gotten a response from the National Security Council as well uh, with regard to the shrapnel from missile strikes that killed civilians. Uh, what the National Security Council is saying that any loss of civilian life is a tragedy and that includes thousands of innocent Ukrainians who have been killed by Russian forces. Well, for more on this, let's now speak to Alexandre Vautravert, who's editor-in-chief of the Swiss Military Review and is joining us from Geneva. Thank you for being with us, Alexandre. So the Russian Defense Ministry saying the missiles used by Ukraine were U.S.-supplied armed tactical missile systems programmed by U.S. specialists. What more, first of all, can you tell us about these weapons? And could they have been programmed and guided by U.S. technicians, as the Russians claim? Uh, first of all, there's no uh, doubt uh, that these weapons have been supplied by the United States of America. Uh, these uh, Atakams uh, missiles um, have only been in use um, in uh, the United States uh, Army and, uh, and Armed Forces. With regards to um, direct involvement of the United States uh, of America, well, let's put it this way, any weapon system that is using GPS technically, indirectly, is using um, U.S. Uh, uh, data. Um, and this uh, eventually will also have to include some Russian manufactured uh, weapons that have been used in this war. And with regards, finally, to your question, where uh, with regards to technicians, U.S. technicians programming the weapons, uh, this is highly unlikely. Okay. So the missiles, you say, were probably guided by U.S. satellites. Is it clear what they were aimed at before they landed on the beach? Um, that's not exactly what I said. What I said is they use U.S. data okay. because they use 
global positioning system. Now, uh, with regards Could they to have used the U.S. satellites? Yes, and I'm sure that uh, anyone who is uh, listening to this program and using uh, his or her car is also using U.S. data in this regard. And so this does not really constitute feeding uh, military intelligence to Ukraine. But once again, uh, this is a non-issue because since the very start of this war, the United States and a number of allied uh, countries have been saying uh, that they will continue to supply military intelligence, photo reconnaissance, satellite uh, imagery uh, to the Ukrainian armed forces. Alexander, does Russia have a point uh, to raise when it says U.S. involvement in Ukraine not right now is going beyond just the provision of weapons? Um, they probably have half of a point. And then the other point is that if you're going to bring this argument uh, up, uh, then you're also going to have to refer to the United Nations Charter, Article 51. Uh, Ukraine is a state that has been uh, aggressed, attacked uh, by Russia, and Ukraine has the right to call upon all the countries uh, in order to uh, make good its uh, retaliation and recuperate its uh, its ground. Okay, so this is, I guess, what the Biden administration was concerned about, wasn't it? Uh, when, when it put restrictions initially on the use of, of certain types of missiles. Do you think this will lead the U.S. to reconsider, and other Western countries, to reconsider sending more of these types of weapons to Ukraine? No, if we are talking about the Atacams uh, missile, we know uh, that the total inventory of Atacams missile, which is a weapon being phased out of U.S. inventory, is eventually going to end up in Ukraine. And this uh, represents several thousands uh, of units. This has been announced uh, several months ago. The limitations that you refer to uh, eventually have been, re have been lifted with regards to the Kharkiv uh, sector of the front because Ukraine was not able to use these long-range weapons in order to defend its own territory because essentially uh, they were located, the front line was located too close to the border. With regards to Crimea, this has long been uh, a non-issue because the United States has never had an issue of Ukraine using U.S. Uh, or allied supplied weapons in order to recuperate its own soil, and that includes um, uh, the uh, particular uh, Crimean Peninsula. Interesting uh, to, to hear that. Now, Moscow is threatening consequences today. How do you think uh, they might respond, the Russians? How, are, how will they respond? They will respond exactly in the same way that they have been, uh, that they have accustomed us, uh, which is, first of all, uh, criticize and say that this will present an escalation. Number two, they will threaten the use of nuclear weapons. Number three, they will eventually launch conventional weapons, and then they will focus and shift their argumentation on a new type of weapon that is going to be delivered to Ukraine. None of these uh, threats have, ever, uh, have eventually since 2022, materialized. Alexandre Rotaver, thank you so much for your insight. Very, very interesting to hear uh, your analysis of uh, the situation. Alexandre Rotaver, editor-in-chief of the Swiss Military Review, live there from Geneva. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.